So why do we actually need to do recovery runs or easy runs? Why can't we just sit on the sofa and eat cheeseburgers? I got this comment after yesterday's video in the comments below. Recovery runs, easy runs, where's the research data showing that these are even necessary slash beneficial and how much and in what way? You'd likely be as well off to simply take another rest day on Monday and then hit your intervals harder on Tuesday with another rest day on Wednesday, more intervals or a long run on Thursday, long run if your events above 10K or more, rest again on Friday, intervals, or same logic as Thursday, long again on Saturday, rest on Sunday, four days rest a week, but with maximum quality on your three training days and making sure that you are recovered between sessions. Note, instead of total rest on your running days, you could do a light medium workout on weight, calisthenics, or just take a short walk, swim, ride. <laughs> and this is like straight in two footed challenge, red card, 100% red card. And what makes me laugh about that stuff is once a study, once, you know, the, literally a put, how would that actually look to begin with? And we'll go back to a comment in a second. How would it look? You're going to get 50 runners in a room and ideally good runners, elite runners or strong recreational competent runners in one room. They can do every other day training hard as you've suggested. And then you're going to get another 50 people that want to train with recovery runs, easy runs, interval sessions, long runs, all spaced out well in the week so that they're optimally recovering. And then check after how long? After eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks? The reality of it is that's impossible to put together. Pretty much impossible. There's nothing in it and it's in insanely expensive to put on any kind of clinical trial and the results will be how reliable based on who's doing, how, in, how individual recovery is, what type of recovery, you're putting them into an alien environment and they're having to get the right sleep, eat the right foods, get the right rest. What are they doing? Are they doing a, day, a day's work as well? So it's exactly mirroring what a typical amateur runner is looking at. Interesting comment. And he received this reply. The training philosophy in your comment was really common in US high schools and colleges during the 90s and early noughties. People thought slow paced runs were useless and went super hard in their workouts, doing all out intervals and stuff. This didn't, didn't translate well into great results and times for this era were slower. You get an aerobic benefit from your runs even if you aren't going hard. If you look at professional runners, all of them train at least six days per week, and a lot of the best ones do seven days and often run twice per day. Having a high volume and frequency of runs is how you get faster, even if they aren't all fast. Which is exactly the right response, and it, it, it was the thinking. And I remember being sat with an England coach before a marathon, and thinking I'm going to tap into this guy's knowledge. He's been there, he's done it, he's, he's been at the Olympics and he told me that he didn't do any easy runs or recovery runs. All he did to recover optimally was to get out there on a mountain bike, but he would never sit down on the mountain bike. He would stand up on the mountain bike, so it replicated running. Didn't last very long, didn't, it had a very, very short career and now we know that it's, there's way, way more optimal ways to train. Another comment. And then he replies, I'm going to play Doubting Thomas here. First of all, where are all the studies? What's their quality? Next, how about counter studies? What's the level of certainty of all this research? Next, sure, I know the top elites today are running almost every day, but does that prove they're optimizing their training time efficiently? Just because everyone's doing it doesn't prove everything, anything. Could it simply be that when one reaches their level and has their recovery ability slash ability to absorb training that one can afford to do a lot more junk miles, even though they're still junk? Please understand that when I'm talking about training sessions, I mean sessions which are overloading relative to your normal and that such overloads are not done excessively. 
you don't increment more than 5% in a session and you always level out for a week or so before trying to go up. Training equals progressive overload plus recovery. Recovery does not mean that you have to go out for a run, especially if doing the run may actually delay your recovery. Number one, you're building a runner, specifically a runner who can go as fast as they can for the race distance that you're trying to prepare for on one morning. And so, yes, you're gonna get the majority of the improvement, the super compensation from the faster session and the longer run. But unless you put the recovery runs and easy runs in between those, that are going to optimize your recovery, which are also helping you to become a better runner through conditioning the running body, conditioning the calves, the quads, the hamstrings, the glutes, in exactly the way as you are going to run, or very, very closely related to the way that you're going to be running on your race day or the event that you're planning towards. Cycling, and I love cycling and use it as a massive cross training tool, doesn't hit in the same way that running does specifically for running. What you then get is number two, you're improving efficiency, running efficiency and aerobic capacity, specific to running. So your total volume is increasing, but you're giving it those runs, those recovery runs and easy runs that are boosting your total volume and boosting your, the amount of practice that you're getting as a runner, so you're becoming more efficient at moving over the ground. Again, cycling, fantastic but it doesn't do what you're trying to do in the same way that a recovery run or an easy run will do. Number three, you're promoting recovery and muscle repair. So you're optimizing, enhancing, accelerating your recovery in exactly the way that a runner would run. Walking will also pump blood around your body, but to not the same extent. Cycling, will also pump blood around the muscles and flush out those toxins and help with muscle repair as well. But you don't get the, the first two benefits from the cycling, the swimming, or the walking. And the bonus one, number five, it's improving your consistency as a runner. Try, if you try this, and if you want to try it, try it. Go out there and run fast on a Wednesday. Go out there and run far on a Sunday and do nothing in between or do as you've suggested, go for a swim, go, go for a walk and see how long that lasts and see how frequent a regular runner is injured and typical runners, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in the US, all over the world, it's pretty much the same. It's different in Asia where people are running for usually a different, more meditative reason. But when, when running becomes slightly competitive, the typical runner is injured once every 12 months. So adding the recovery runs and easy runs and giving them the respect that they deserve and the attention that they deserve and just as much as attention as you do the faster running and longer running helps the consistency. And that was the main point of the video yesterday. It increases your consistency and your ability to hit the interval session properly and hit the long run properly because your body has enhanced recovery, accelerated recovery to go fast or far again. Incredibly important and incredibly important that it's specific to running. So you're building a body specific to running and whether you're running fast or far or slow and easy in recovery, that's building more efficiency and running economy. It's promoting recovery and muscle rec repair whilst you're doing that, which is in turn building your aerobic capacity and making your, your cardiovascular system more robust. All of this allows for consistency in training, so more miles without risk of overtraining. And we all know that in running or any pursuit, consistency is key. I hope you got something from that. I like these debated topics. So if you have any more questions, pop them in the comments below.